Okay, we are at uh, uh, section 19.3, latent heat, um, and we'll share the PowerPoint. Let's go. And latent heat is it has to do with phase changes. Uh, changing, you know, they're showing you an iceberg uh, in water. So the, it's a change from solid to a liquid. There's also a phase change from uh, liquid water to steam. These are phase changes. And the, um, the, uh, the higher phase is the, the one with the, uh, the higher temperature. So water is a higher phase than, than ice. Steam is a higher phase than, uh, uh, than, um, than water. So the latent heat is the amount of energy to, to uh, change the mass of a system. So let's just take a, a, a plate and you put a, a, uh, uh, a cube of ice uh, on the plate. Uh, let's just say it, it, it weighs 10 grams and the, uh, when it melts, you're gonna get 10 grams of water. So the, the, but at first you have nothing. So, so the energy needed to change that, the delta M is the change in mass is you get that 10 grams of water, the, your latent heat is equal to the uh, Q divided by the delta M, the change in the mass. Um, so Q is equal to the latent heat times the, uh, the change in mass. Let's, um, let's continue. These are some of the latent heats. Now there's two different, latent heats, latent heat of fusion uh, to go from, from ice to, uh, to water and the latent heat of vaporation, vaporization to go from, um, uh, I've, I've been saying water, but let's use more the, the general term. Uh, latent heat of fusion is to go from a solid to a uh, liquid and um, the, uh, latent heat of vaporization is to go from a liquid to a gas. Um, and so there's different points here. The one that you won't see, of course, is carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide because it, it has no liquid phase. It goes straight, straight from a uh, uh, solid to a gas. Um, so that you won't see, uh, see that on here. But uh, uh, Helium, uh, it shows its melting point minus uh, 272 degrees C, um, and its latent heat of fusion is uh, uh, 5.23 times 10 to the uh, 3 joules per kilogram. Uh, its boiling point is uh, uh, 268.93 uh, minus 268.93, and so its latent heat of vaporization is uh, 2. 2.09 times 10 to the 4 joules per kilogram. Let's concentrate on water. Uh, its melting point, of course, is 0 degrees C, and its latent heat of fusion is 3.3 times 10 to the 5th joules per kilogram. Um, its boiling point, of course, is 100, 100 degrees uh, Celsius, and its uh, latent heat of vaporization is 2.26 times 10 to the 6th joules per kilogram. Uh, let's see um, uh, if I want to, so the, 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 this increase in energy uh, it has to do with the bond breaking uh, that allows the molecules to move further apart uh, and uh, so it, it all has to do with the, the internal energy of the material. Um, so uh, the higher phase, I, th I think I already said it, the higher phase material is the material existing at the higher temperature. So water, uh, if you have water and ice, water is the higher phase material. If you have water and steam, steam is the higher phase material. Um, so in my, oh, okay, I, uh, I'm on the wrong uh, uh, page here on my notes. Okay, uh, when the energy enters the system causing melting or vaporization, the amount of uh, higher phase material increases. So delta M is positive. Uh, in other words, if the ice melts, you get more water. And Q is positive. You're putting energy into the system. When the energy is extracted from a system causing freezing or condensation, uh, the amount of higher phase material decreases. In which if, 
if you have a, a cup of water and you freeze it, it you you lose the uh, uh, it, the delta M is minus because it's formed to, uh, in the ice and the Q is negative. Um, so the delta M always refers to the higher uh, phase materials. Now we're going to go through some graphs that, uh, oh gosh, uh, let's see. That is not good. Okay, there, there, there we've got it. Okay, there we got it. All right, uh, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna start off, we've got, uh, our example here is the energy, consider the energy required to convert a, uh, a system. The system consists of one gram uh, cube of ice at minus 30 degrees uh, to steam to 120 degrees. So we're gonna go from uh, one gram of ice at minus 30 uh, to uh, steam, 120 degrees. Um, so this is the graph that's gonna take us through that step. So right, we're right here right now, we've got one gram of ice at minus 30. Um, so the, uh, uh, this part A, this little triangle here, uh, is the temperature of ice changes from minus 30 degrees C to uh, zero degrees C. Now there's no phase change, it's all ice at this point. So the specific heat of ice is 2,090 joules per kilogram uh, C, degree C. So the amount of energy added is um, to the Q equals MC delta T, uh, one, uh, one times 10 to the minus three is one gram, one gram of, uh, ice times 20, 90 joules per kilogram per degree C. Um, and the delta T in this case is 30, 30 uh, degree C. And that gives us 62.7 joules. So we're putting 62.7 joules just to raise the ice from minus 30 to, to zero, to where it, it can melt. So that's the, uh, the first part of it is just a specific heat problem. Um, then now we're going to um, converting ice to water and here's where we get a latent heat um, so Q is equal to delta to, to L final delta M uh, wa of water equals a uh, uh, L final uh, I mean late I'm sorry latent not final latent heat of fusion times delta M of water equals a, a latent uh, heat of fusion the mass of the ice equals 3.3 .3 times 10 to the fifth joules per kilogram uh, times one gram, one times 10 to the minus three kilograms, and you get 333 joules of energy. It takes 333 joules of energy to melt this one gram of ice. Um, okay, now we're now we've got all water. Now the uh, the the one gram of ice has turned into water. So now we hit, we're back into the, uh, a specific heat problem. Q equals the mass of the water times specific heat of water times delta T. Um, so we've got, uh, uh, what we have to go from zero degrees C up to uh, 100 to where it's boiling. So we're gonna raise this, this, um, this, gram of water up to 100 degrees C. So we've got uh, one gram, which is one times 10 to the minus three kilograms times 4186. They Here they use four, uh, 4190, uh, 4.19 times 10 to the three joules per kilogram per degree C times 100 degrees. That, that's the delta T, 100 degrees. Well, you multiply that out and you get 419 joules of energy to raise this uh, from zero degrees up to 100. You can see the from zero to 100 that in, in the water phase. Okay, now we're uh, at the latent heat uh, of vaporization. Um, so the, uh, and it's Q equals the latent heat of vaporization for, for uh, uh, 
the delta M of steam equals the latent heat of vaporization for the mass of water equals 2.26 times 10 to the six joules per kilogram times one gram, one times 10 to the minus three kilograms equals 2.26 times 10 to the three joules to, to, uh, to take this to, from water to steam, it's the, uh, to, to vaporize it. Um, and now we're at the last part where we're raising the steam to 120 degrees. So it's the, uh, uh, again, it's a, it's a specific heat problem. The Q equals the mass of the steam times the um, specific heat of steam times delta T. And the delta T in this case is 20 degrees. Uh, one, so it's one gram, one times 10 to the minus three kilograms times 2.01 times 10 to the three joules per kilogram per degree C times 20 degrees and you get 40.2 joules. Okay, now if we add all of the all of the energy together, we get the 62.7 joules to uh, to raise the temperature of the ice here. It's still ice. Then 33 joules to melt the ice to water. Uh, 419 joules to heat the water up to 100 degrees C. 226 uh, times 10 to the three joules to turn it into steam and then 40.2 joules to raise the steam to 120 degrees. So the total energy put into the system is 3.11 times 10 to the three joules, 3,110 joules of energy to go from a one gram cube of ice to steam that's 120 degrees. Um, okay, suppose the same process of adding energy to, I, to the ice cube is performed as we just discussed, but instead we graph the internal energy of the system as a function of energy input. What would this graph look like? Well, there's no, we have to look at the answer. It's, it's a straight line. Um, this is the, the uh, on the bottom is the energy, ans uh, energy uh, added, uh, the uh, 3,110 joules is the total. You can see the bottom axis. And you can see it starts from ice. This is the, um, the joules in the internal energy. So it's just a straight line. The slope of the, uh, the line is one. Uh, and now we do have, there is such a thing as supercooling. Do they, they don't talk about superheating, but you can, you can have uh, supercooling. Um, if liquid water is held perfectly still in a very, uh, clean container, possibly, it's possible for the water to drop below zero degrees without freezing into ice. I think I've seen some videos of this where people take a, uh, a bottle of water and they chill it, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it stays water and then they like hit it and it all freezes instantaneously. This is a case of supercooling. You can probably look up supercooling of water on, on YouTube and you'll find those types of videos. Um, so if it's, if it's suddenly disturbed, it suddenly freezes. Uh, now there's also a, a, um, uh, oh, it's, it's how they use uh, commercial, they use liquid sodium acetate in sealed plastic pouches to make hand warmers, um, using this principle. There's also, it's also possible if you have a very clean cup and, and, uh, very pure water, if you put it in a microwave, it's possible to, to superheat it, you have supercooling, you have superheating. Um, so it can, it can, most of the time it doesn't happen, but it, it, you can have superheating of water while the water is heating, but it's not boiling. Uh, you reach in to grab the cup and you disturb it and it, it suddenly, the bubbles in the, in the uh, water suddenly burst and, and you could scald yourself. So that you have to be, um, superheated water can become explosive as, as bubbles from the, from form immediately and hot water is forced upward out of the cup. So uh, you have to be careful with superheating, um, but you can look that up on, on uh, um, the, uh, look up super cooling. You'll find videos of them uh, freezing, freezing, uh, of water freezing almost instantaneously.
Oh yeah, I think that's it. We're gonna stop here and next time we'll go to work uh, done on a gas.